This is definitely going to be a game where play draw is going to be pretty important. Affinity obviously wants to get on the board very quickly. So we'll uh, find out exactly uh, who's on the play in just a second here. Players getting the go-ahead to start the match. Wakefield versus Anderson here in our round number one. And it looks like Todd has won the die roll. That's going to be a pretty big win. All right, Ryan, jamming turn one, Delver Secrets. That's where you want to start. I suppose on the play, it's just still... Well, you were saying on the draw, if we have spell pierces, maybe we don't jam the turn one, Delver. Right, winning, winning the die roll really relieves a lot of those tensions. And if Todd has, say, a reman on the following turn, he can start to leverage this tempo where things are a lot harder on the draw. We have Welding Jar, Blink Moth, Nexus, Signal Pest for Wakefield. And Todd, there we go. It's flipping off, transforming off Cryptic Command. We have a turn two, Insectile Aberration. Not the ideal card to transform to, but transforming is definitely good. Yeah, on the play, if you transform it on turn one, it's just a pretty nice card. Yes. One mana, three, two, flyer. They, uh, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't print that card. So hits on in for three. Daniel down to 17. And Todd continues to play threats. At this point, he's looking like a legacy deck with a turn two young Pyromancer. Yeah, one copy in the main. If Todd can get game one here. That's going to feel like a steal to me. Yeah, and he's he's got what he needs. Pressure now is on Wakefield to either have an extremely explosive proactive draw or a Galvanic Blast or two. Well, his draw is proactive. Turn two makes Steel Overseer. And I was going to say Todd was left without removal as he didn't have any, any in his hand. However, he picked up a copy of Flame Slash for the turn. And I feel like that's just going to have to go at the Steel Overseer. Yeah, this Welding Jar is going to solve that. Uh, Wakefield did have that on turn one. Yeah, so Todd does the second removal spell. Looks like the hand's pretty heavy on lands for Anderson. Well, and that's the, one of the differences, I think, between legacy Teamer Delver and modern Teamer Delver. You know, Brainstorm's not in this format, so you really are at the mercy of your blind transforms to Delver. I mean, flooding out. Imagine one of those cards is a Brainstorm here. This hand is incredible. He's still doing all right. We do know about the Cryptic Command, and I believe I spotted a Snapcaster Mage. So there's some all right. play. Yeah, and he's got Daniel down to 12. Maybe it doesn't matter. Right. With, with Wakefield having no zero mana creatures to this point, it's unlikely that he generates too much value with the Overseer on this turn. He gets one activation. Yeah, I, I do think a swing of three with the, the Insectile Aberration, and then if you add in Cryptic Command to tap out some blockers, yeah, it seems like Todd should be able to get this one. Right. Etch Champion was the play for Daniel. Leaves back the Steel Overseer. When things are even, Etch Champion is probably the best card in the matchup in either deck. But Todd's just very ahead in this damage race. Yeah, Todd can tap draw with Cryptic, swing in for six, and then that Snapcaster is going to be lethal, and he's still at 16. Right. Todd has registered snow-covered basic lands for the tournament. What are you feeling? What's your feeling on that? Do you ever register snow covers just to spice it up? No, they're they're ugly. <laughs> I'm not I'm not into it. Uh, Anderson's gonna give it a think, see what could be the most bad thing that happens. You were mentioning a proactive line with cryptic command. Yeah. You open up some avenues where Wakefield can have a cranial plating, maybe that plus galvanic blast, and things can get really ugly. Yeah, I think I'd rather tap draw on Daniel's turn and then make the attack on the following turn just to keep things safe. Todd's even going to wait, go slower than that. Swings in with Insectile Aberration to put Daniel to 9 and makes Tarmogoyf. Now the tap draw on Daniel's turn is getting into lethal territory. Right. They won't have access to this here, and depending on how Wakefield taps on the following turn, if he taps these creature lands down or taps too low on mana, right. Anderson can just Cryptic Command, come in for He's lethal dead. on his own turn. Right. And the way the battlefield's shaping up, Wakefield is just behind. There's a lot of pressure to start using his mana. Yeah, it's pretty likely that Anderson does have the green light. Yeah, I mean, if he had something, Daniel had something like a Vault Scourge that gained life, it would really make things more difficult here. But as it is, Todd can likely just end main phase this Cryptic and look for lethal. And the Wakefield tapping three mana, this looks like the end of the game. 
See, Master of Ethereum. Daniel has all his haymakers. Look at this. We have Steel Overseer, Etch Champion, Master of Ethereum. It's not going to matter. Tap draw with Cryptic Command. Three damage off the Insectile. Two, three more from the Pyromancer and his token. That Tarmogoyf, instant sorcery land. That's three more. That's Daniel's whole life total. Yep. Both players knew about the Cryptic Command that is what the Aberration transformed yeah. to, but it's going to come across for the lethal year. Swing for nine. Todd Anderson takes game one. A big win for Teamer Delver. And a lot of things had to really break Todd's way. Winning the die roll. Turn one transforms the Del. Blind transforms the Delver. Finds his one of young Pyromancer on turn two. That kind of aggressive curve out. I'm not sure we can expect that every game, but it's very welcome as it happens. Right. In the dark, you don't know if your Flame Slashes or Lightning Bolts are going to be good. So you keep hands without them. And he had to produce that Flame Slash. That came down about when he needed it. Though, uh, ended up not being really a factor there because of the way everything else came together. In some, in some hands, you are going to want it, but uh, things are about to get better for Todd. But Yeah, well, let's take a look at how they're going to get better. We'll look at their sideboards. Todd's sideboard, three copies of Spreading Seas, three Ceremonious Rejection, two Grim Lava Mancer, two Ancient Grudge, a Disdainful Stroke, a Dispel, and Engineered Explosives, and is it Staticaster and a Vendillion Click. This, this sideboard's huge against Affinity. Yeah, you could bring in most of these cards, honestly. Uh, the Windmill Slams, the three Ceremonious Rejection, those give you a lot of play against Etch Champion. Again, right. about the best card in the matchup. Two Grim Lava Mancers, those are excellent. They're pretty much just killing something every turn of the game. Yeah, for best card in the matchup, though, I'm going to go one more down. I Ancient Grudge is pretty hard to, to top. Yes, and the only reason that I would vouch for Edge Champion is because it fades Ancient Grudge. But, oh, uh, okay. I thought you meant Ceremonious is the best card in the matchup. No, no, okay. no. Ceremonious has value because it answers the best card okay. in the matchup. <laughs> right. Uh, the two Ancient Grudge, Windmill Slams as well, Engineered Explosives, very similar effect to the Ancient Grudge. Is it Static Caster? Also excellent. It, it, he has too many cards to bring in that you're not going to reach for Spreading Seas necessarily, but this is a Creature Land deck. I, I, I would probably leave them on the bench. He probably has the ability to. But you could, yeah. Right. It, it, it plays if he really wants it. Now, Daniel's side, two Thoughtseize, two Stubborn Denial, two Whip Flare. He has a Third Etch Champion, a Rest in Peace, Graft Digger's Cage, Damping Sphere, Gear Per Aether Grid, a copy of the Antiquities War, an Ancient Grudge, a Dispatch, and a Dismember. Team or Delver's actually deck that can, it's a little hard to board against. Um, cards that answer Young Pyromancer and Delver's Secrets don't answer Tarmogoyf and Hooting Mandrills very well. Right. In general, though, the Dispatch and the Dismember, they tend to answer all of these things. Tarmogoyf can get out of reach. Uh, and that's, that, those are the kind of the two cards I'm looking at. And with Affinity, you really want the sideboard very lightly. Theoretically, you could also reach for Thoughtseize, Stubborn Denial. But really, as long as you're stopping Anderson from beating you, you have a lot of inevitability in the matchup. You have that third edge champion coming in. That's t really tough to answer because you have creature lands. More of your draws do something, uh, though the, the power level might be a little bit lower. They, t they tend to play, and they combine with your haymakers to actually generate a higher power level because of your synergies. Okay. You might reach for rest in peace because it's a Tarmogoyf matchup, a Snapcaster Mage matchup, a Hooting Mandrels matchup. There's a lot of stuff that it hits. It's awkward because Arkbond Ravager is also one of your most important cards in the matchup. Remember, these cards combine very poorly because Modular relies on the creature going to your graveyard. Right, so it's not going to exile correctly. For that reason, if, you're, if your graveyard hate card is rest in peace instead of, say, um, uh, Relic of Regenitus, it's not going to play nearly as much as a matchup like this. You generally only want it if it actually lights out. So you mentioned Daniel having the inevitability here. You hear the card late, Etch Champion. If this game goes long, even at post board, does it favor Daniel? Todd has a lot of answers. The ceremonious rejections, they are going to hurt the Etch Champion. Daniel's goal is definitely to win fast. Yeah. But he has a lot of scrappy draws, and Anderson is very light on actual haymakers. Wakefield has the ability in a lot of draws to play around Engineered Explosives. Not so much is it Static Caster, not so much Ancient Grudge, but most of Todd's stuff, just one-for-ones. So on Daniel's side, do you keep in your cards like Karn and the Antiquities War here? I don't think I'd go so far as to bring in the Antiquities War. I would at least shave on Karns. We did see Cryptic Command out of Anderson in Game 1. Right. Don't know if Remand is on Wakefield's radar, but even if Remand is something that you're thinking about, that's likely the first card that Anderson's boarding out because of how it lines up in the matchup. But if you suspect yeah. Ceremonious Rejection, that makes Karn a lot worse. That much is true. So a double mulligan for Wakefield. We'll see whether or not Daniel can, can put something together here. He'll be on the play for our sideboarded game. 
You never like going to five, especially in the cyborg games with Affinity. That makes Ancient Grudge that much better. Mox Opal. And I will admit, I do what Daniel did here, too, where you, your third artifact is the one you're casting with Opal. Not actually going to work. But he can make Vault Scourge nonetheless, just has to pay two life for it. Yeah, two life, not a very significant cost. Though, I think that this is it for Wakefield. Some two land lands. Demand. I think one of them is at least uh, Creature Land, maybe both. Oh. Blink Moth Nexus, Cranial Plating. All right, does Todd have a Ceremonious for it? He does. That's a big play there for Todd. Dan I, I don't mind Daniel's hand, he, but he needed that to resolve. Yes. And now Todd pff, drawing Ancient Grudge against Daniel's Maul to five. I don't know about this, Ryan. That yeah. card is just real good against Affinity. Right, and if you fire off the Grudge on the Vault Scourge, then Wakefield doesn't even have the Mox Opal online anymore without activating the Blink Moth Nexus. You couldn't even catch, catch, cast an Etch Champion if you had it. If Todd doesn't Ancient Grudge this turn, it's only because he's that confident in the board. Right. You know, the I don't need to Ancient Grudge just now. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. The way that things are set up, too, with an Ancient Grudge, with Wakefield being so light on cards in hand, even if Wakefield just casts Etch Champion on the following turn, Anderson can theoretically just knock Wakefield off Metalcraft and then answer the champion. Todd will Thought Scour himself. That's five cards. Do we see a Hooting Mandrels? We do. We've all five gone. Ooh, that's a bingo square for me. You did not get a bingo. It's a bingo square? I, yeah, it's a square. What is it? Do Claire casts Hooting Mandrels? Delve five plus cards. I didn't think you'd be getting that off Hooting Mandrels. No, I also did not. All right. I also have the three or more historic cards played square, but Affinity just never seems to do that. No, KCI is your best bet on that. I mean, when I play Affinity, it does that. It's, on, it's, a, little, it's a little camera shy. Spreading seas for Todd on the Blink Moth Nexus. I actually don't want to put on a play on Todd's side. Whether you've, So I want to, what I think was a misstep, or maybe not. When he fetches the Breeding Pool, one of my thoughts on Todd's side is when I'm playing against Affinity and I have a hand that's as good as Todd's and my opponent is on a four, five card hand, I start trying to think, how could I possibly lose the game? And sometimes Affinity plays Blood Moons in the sideboard. My thought would be, you know, a way I could lose here is if he just plays a sideboarded Blood Moon. It's unlikely, but I'm ahead by so much. How do you, how do you feel about possibly getting a basic forest there? The thing about basic forest is the rest of his hand is still tied up. You saw there he missed his third land drop. If you're missing your third land drop, in general, you should try to play a game where you can cast your spells if nothing happens. Okay. It is true that you could just get slammed by a Blood Moon, and then you start losing that game. But then you can only cast half your grudge. Right. If you find a forest, though, you see it has a grip full of blue cards, and you just can't cast your spells if there's no Blood Moon, which is going to be more common, then so you're just in trouble for no reason. So because so much of his hand is blue, just... It's a nice thought to try to play around some random card, but right. get, don't get too fancy. Mm -hmm. And your argument was Blood Moon. You also see a lot of players, they're a little shy with shock lands because of life total, where in general, yeah. not casting your spells costs you more life in the long term. With these land light, light decks, you really just need to get your mana online. So Hooting Mandos puts Daniel down to 14. Now we will see that Ancient Grudge. Todd will first hit the Master of Ethereum. Says go. He leaves up the breeding pool and is not going to grudge the Vault Scourge. Right. And that being master and not edge champion, that's a pretty big win for Todd. Here is Ink Moth Nexus from Daniel. It and Vault Scourge will attack. And yeah, so much confidence on Todd's side. Just takes the damage. Two poison and nine life is what he'll drop to. Yeah, no reason to cash, cash in the grudge just yet. You want to save that for something like a cranial plating. Yeah, it's your SOS. Maybe use it to team up on an Arcbound Ravager. What is interesting is that Todd has a uh, Dismember in his hand. And yeah, I, he, he just can't cast it here. You'd hate to lose to a Galvanic Blast this game. Right. You like to have Dismember in the early turns. You like to have it in a hand where yeah. you don't have to shock so aggressively with your lands. Todd says everything here. Draws Flame Slash. Might see a Flame Slash, Serum Visions, Leave Up Grudge. All that sounds fine. Yes. Of course, Todd going to do that play, but sequence it in the better order of <laughs> Serum Visions, then Flame Slash. Right. You want to have as much information as possible before you make your decisions. In particular, it's a lot easier to Flame Slash if you draw, say, another copy of Flame Slash or a Lightning Bolt. And he's going to actually spreading seize the 
Ink Moth Nexus and say go. He'll just play it even slower. No Flame Slash yet. You have to earn that Flame Slash, and Vault Scourge doesn't do it. Right. Yeah, Todd's already taken a couple hits off Poison. That Spreading Sea has helped him yeah. just ignore the Ink Moth. Don't have to cash in a removal spell. He does not have too many removal spells. In particular, the Flame Slash can never hit the Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, we just have Engineered Explosives, the other half of Grudge in our Graveyard, Dismember, and Flame Slash. We don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get too aggressive here, Ryan. <laughs> the Dismember is, you know, because you you're you here, Wakefield Zek has Galvanic Blast. That one, Todd's going to try not to cast if he can yeah. avoid it. And Galvanic Blast goes upstairs, putting Todd down to five. Daniel does that. I believe it tagged the, tagged the creature. Oh, he went with the Mandrills. Yeah. Okay, but he had to make that play before he lost the artifact. Right. And Todd will now have to refine a threat, but Serum Vision should help him do it. Here's the card. Scry top bottom. If he's so quick on top to put one on top, I'm imagining that's a replacement threat. Generally, I would think so. Kind of the floor is it's another Serum Visions. Uh, that's about the that, worst yeah. card you would leave on top. Snapcaster Mage for Serum Visions. All right, we'll draw into, not sure, double, double scry to the bottom for Todd. So, Ryan, with these Teamer Delver strategies, right now this deck looks fantastic for Todd. It feels like he's playing the Legacy deck, which is great. Why don't, why don't we see this deck have more success in Modern? Are there matchups which are just, like, what are its bad matchups here? That your keep this your down. power level, honestly, is a little bit low, and you're saying this deck looks good. I want to actually make yeah. the other argument. Wakefield's on a mold of five, and Anderson hasn't won the game yet. I feel like this is not an impressive showing. Well, he just made a second Hooting Mandrels. Oh, now we're off to the races. <laughs> All right. He's got two Lightning Bolts in hand. He's going to win this. All right. So, like, when you say it's not very powerful, is the problem that a Jess guy will just bully you out of the game by having better cards? Things Frequently. like that? Yeah, you're going to have problems with that in the grinder matchups. Um, imagine that Wakefield's on Mardu Pyromancer, and it's just yeah, kill spelling all of Anderson's stuff, casting Lingering Souls. I think that's what I was getting when I said Jess guy. So, like, with Teamer Delver, you know, Jess guy, Mardu, Jund... Grixis, like, you just get beaten up by all these decks? Yeah, Jund is a really serious problem. The Grixis deck at least has the ability to be a Coligan's command deck. Teamer doesn't really have anything you can lean on like that. And there's the handshake for Daniel. I think a pretty well-played game on Daniel's side, well fought. Um, a multi five on the play against Ancient Grudge is just gonna be hard for Affinity to do much with. Right, and that's just the multi five.